Hello everyone and welcome back to No Man's Sky. In this episode, I am not recording this as part of a live stream. So far, all of my No Man's Sky episodes on YouTube have been live stream recordings, but this time I'm recording this just for YouTube, as I will continue to do for special occasions in No Man's Sky. I think when I discover something particularly interesting or things change in the game in a fundamental way. And in this case, I'm going to introduce some mods that I have installed. Uh, first and simplest is a mod that makes the click immediate. Previously when I was playing the game, uh, there was a delay when clicking things. Um, it had a little circle thing and it took some time to click on stuff, but a very simple mod add to the game uh, from uh, nomanskymods.com allows you to make the click instantaneous, so that's good. And we will go through some other interesting mods. One, remove the what's been called the Instagram tint or filter on the game, which was sort of a yellowish tint that the game had. I do think that without that tint, the game looks substantially better. So that has been added. There are a lot of mods you can add, and installing mods is generally fairly easy unless it uses the script extender. It's generally just uh, unzipping a file into a particular folder with the main game files. So that's the idea. Currently we are at this location with a steeled, uh, sealed steel reinforced door. And behind that door there may be some goodies. But as soon as I shoot at that door, I will be attacked. So, um, yeah, well I guess we'll get to it then. Uh, you might have already noticed that my exosuit speaks in, uh, in Japanese now. And so that's another mod. You can get your exosuit to speak in Japanese. But it's a thing. That one's pretty far away. I'll reload. And there are a lot of mods that I haven't added to the game that you might want. And so I'll talk about some of those. Also I have some ideas for mods just in case somebody who can make the mods are listening. Right now there are there's no official mod modding tool kit for No Man's Sky and the mods that are being made are generally of the type of you know changing numbers around or just toggling some option that is normally hidden. Okay, so we are inside. Temperature level stabilizing. I don't really need first aid, but I'll take it. Okay, let's see if we can stop this alarm and uh, get the stuff from here. Okay, an enthusiastic guild blob is on screen and it talks in the language of the traders and bounces up and down letters in alien alphabet. Something is wrong with that sentence. The bizarre computer program asks for something, trade vaults open, uh, something, 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 oxide, get language, something, something, silicate, something, 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 language. Well, either oxide or silicate, I guess, unless it says isotope somewhere in there. So I'll give it an oxide. Okay, the delighted education blob teaches me some of the language of the Vakin, it looks like. The word for interloper, visual and detection. Okay, well that's a deal. I really wanted technology. One thing I'm lacking right now is warp technology. Advanced warp technology that will unlock other systems. So now I'm gonna save here. And then we can talk about my favorite additional mod that I've added in. And that is the low flight mod. Okay, so the launch thrusters were previously an annoyance, but one mod... Oh, okay, there's a weather warning. Uh, one mod reduced the number of plutonium consumption for the launch thrusters, so now I don't have to replenish the plutonium quite as often. Uh, I set it to 50% of what it used to be, but you can set it to lower than that. You can have a 25% consumption rate or even lower. But uh, yeah, if, if you're irritated by the inventory system and the fact that you have to do inventory management there is a mob that allows you to increase the number of uh, which got uh, 
number of stuff that you can put into each slot, if you will. So here in your exosuit is 250. If you need 500, you can do that. Or if you need 1,000, you can do that. You can also make some of this other stuff stackable, like the Gek Charms and all. So there's a mod for that too. Okay, let us use our reduced launch thrusters and... Oh, no, I didn't do that right. W. And we are going to see the benefits of my favorite mod, which is the low flight mod. Oops. Which, as you saw right there, allows you to bump into the terrain, which is not possible in the stock game, and also allows you to fly low and below things even. In fact, you can fly underwater, though unfortunately this is not a uh, planet with water on it. I wish planets had more of a mix of water and terrain. Like, you know, if they'd have lakes or something, that'd be nice. Let me see if there's anything to fly under. It'd be better if I had done this on one of those planets with, like, islands floating in the sky. But you can see, I mean, I can fly arbitrarily low. Uh, if I bump into stuff, it just uh, knocks my shield a bit, unless I'm out of shields. Well, there's a something here. Oh, there's a knowledge stone too. Can't stay out here for long because of a storm. Get word for fusion. I need a bypass chip for this. I can make a bypass chip. But I, I just want to fly around. Yeah. Hold on. Um, well, I don't have much inventory space anyway. Let me power up that. Let me power up that. Okay, so now I want to make a bypass chip. And really, the instantaneous click is much nicer. You might have noticed that I have an Atlas Pass. That's something else I've done. I'm not going to reveal how to get the Atlas Pass, but apparently you don't have to be on the Atlas Path in order to get one. So that's nice. So you can unlock the Atlas stuff even if you're, you didn't accept the Atlas Path. Okay, so I'm going to take a look for a shelter, and I'm hoping to find a drop pod. And... Outposts, no such luck. But okay, outpost is fine. We'll head over there and see how that goes. Now you might ask, well, why have a Japanese voice exosuit? And mainly it's because after a while you might get irritated with the exosuit voice, uh, constantly giving you alerts. Actually, if you uh, turn it to a language you don't understand, it just becomes part of the background. And, um, yeah. So I don't notice it as much. Okay, very good. Okay, there is a Gek here. Now, in the realm of mods that I would like, uh, stuff that gets rid of the some of the notifications and letterboxing would be nice, especially the journey milestones. I, w I really want to get rid of the journey milestones. They're really annoying. They happen too often and I don't need them because I can I can see all my stats whenever I look at the Galactic Trade Network anyway, so this is good enough. Anyway, let's get rid of the Gek Charm. Um, alum aluminium. aluminium. Uh, I might want to hang on to because I've got a use for that now. Okay. Well, it looks like it was just the Gek Charm to get rid of. Okay, let's talk to this Gek. Yeah, interacting immediately while the delay is really good. Friend, that's a good way to start. Get something high, something friend, something high. I wonder if when I uh, learn all the words, it'll make any more sense. Because um, that's not a lot of words to work with. The trader seems ill, its skin is flaking, and its eyes lack a certain luster. Well, that, ex that explains why it's sort of... Uh, choppy in its speech. It slowly gabbles at me, and as it does, its voice croaks. A uh, strange, dry, flat stench fills every corner of the facility. I inspect my exosuit for things I could offer it. Well, if it's dry and flat, flaking, I guess water. Okay, gratitude seems immense. Okay, warp technology? No, uh, advanced cooling sigma. Oh well. Well, my Gek standing has increased. So, 
as far as the warp technology is concerned, um, there are certain systems that are locked depending on their type of warp drive. And if we take a look at my starship right now, let me move uh, antimatter over temporarily. Install, te install technology. This is the hyperdrive technology, but all I've got as an option is pulse jet sigma and pulse jet tau. So I can't build a new uh, a warp drive upgrade, I think. Unless I have to actually destroy my existing warp drive in order to do it. But I, that's not a chance I want to take, is it? No. Okay, so final mod that I've installed so far that sh would be of interest to many people, I think. And let's launch. Is called Immersive Space. And Immersive Space, all it does really is it eliminates the multicolored space thing. And instead, space, once we get through the atmosphere, and uh, there's a sort of dramatic change after we get through the atmosphere so it's very obvious now there we go and space is now black right and interesting thing about the atmospheres of planets in no man's sky is they're sort of reversed they're very dense at the top so that's weird but it's for the dramatic effect which uh, a lot of things in uh, no man's sky are for dramatic effect because it's sort of a movie version of sci-fi which I like, because, you know, that's what attracted me to sci-fi in the first place. Um, so, but anyway, it's nice to have space looking a lot more like space. And in fact, it, it gives, it allows you to see the atmosphere a lot better, which is sort of enticing. Now, if you want mods to reduce the number of asteroids, you can do that. So that's a possibility. There are mods to reduce the, the sun flares, if you want, if you don't want that effect. Uh, but... The thing is, we don't have the modding tools, so what we don't have is like a way to add new types of space stations, really. There, there are improved textures for space station interiors, is a possibility. So if you think that the space station interiors need a little bit of an upgrade, you can do that. Instead of make, uh, I, people have compared it to Tron. Also, if you're annoyed by the fact that the entryway into the station interior, if you will, is on the second floor, you can move that to the first floor. Uh, I think. If that's not already a mod, it, uh, it probably will be soon. But I, I thought I saw it, that uh, you, you can get that entrance down here. I'm just going to walk up because it's more stately and we've got artificial gravity. So yeah, things are looking up as far as the gameplay is concerned, but variety of creatures, you can increase the number of creatures, uh, you can increase the size of the creatures and plants is another mod that you can get very easily. Well, nobody to talk to around here, unfortunately. Alright, let me take a look at the ships coming in outside. Now, I've got an Atlas Pass version 1, but that's not good enough to unlock these doors. This requires a version 3, and there's a version 2 door, I'm sure. Version war, uh, 1 is just for uh, containers at certain outposts, you might see. Okay, but let's take a look at ships. You can get ship retextures. Those are available. So if you don't like the color of some ships, but in order to put completely new ships into the game, we probably need modding tools of some kind. I'm not sure. Get something trading something. Okay, well let's take a look at a starship. 18 slots, not not great. Uh, let's compare. Yeah, mine's is better. So, decline. Interesting bug look. It sort of reminds me of the Aurora in uh, Star Citizen in a way. Just vaguely. That one's going off. Okay, so basically I'm here. I haven't done that much. I mean, if you take a look at my progress. Um, get down. We, we definitely need a slider for this. I don't know why not. So I can use my scroll wheel to go through this. But one, two, three, four systems only. So four systems. I've, uh, this, I'm on my fourth life so far. So if you want the uh, progress as far as that's concerned. I need to upload and name these yet. I haven't come up with good names. 
as far as creatures we've discovered, that's an interesting one with entirely... Uh, I, I don't know if they're long toes or, uh, or just eight legs. I guess we could call it eight legs. But we, we found another cactus knot. There's a lot of cactus knots. That one's also weird. But this is my first dinosaur-like thing. Drippasaur. I've uh, discovered a Drippasaur. It was, it was hostile to me. It's in this system. So yeah, that is my first dinosaur. So that we've done. Okay, so on that note, I will continue looking for interesting mods uh, that will make the game a little bit more smooth, I think, is my first thing. So a lot of the stuff I've done uh, is just making the game a little bit more of a smooth experience. Like, so I don't have to drill for more plutonium, uh, like I can fly the way I want to instead of having this artificial boundary uh, near the ground. And also clicking on things doesn't take forever these days, so I don't have to wait for interactions. So yeah, uh, but I will report if there are any other interesting mods. Again, you can get these at... Uh, 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 Nexus Mods probably has them as well, but I got them off of nomanskymods.com. Okay, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video update. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.